we get into your, you know, direct relationship with psychedelics, um, there's also a, a, you know, a view, a perspective of, you know, not having any stimulants, no music, no kind of stimulants. What, um, just go there, that's how we're going to get into psychedelics. What's, have you had that experience? Have you had experiences of no music and how different is it or what? Doesn't, if you don't have the music, does it not allow you to explore your body? In this body? Well, initially I started off with music and I had a couple trips before that um, at a certain point during the trip. I don't want any music anymore. But I've never had one trip without music at all like from beginning to end okay okay oh. so it's part but of I, your i can just imagine that if you don't have that you will hear music anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> just all kinds of sounds um music plays such a key role in my life that i pretty much wake up every day with a song in my head you know from the previous day that i've been playing or you know so with or without psychedelics, there's music playing, you know, um, in that regard. So, yeah, it's just, you know, to get a feel again, I've, you know, um, music's played a part in my, you know, all of my life, <laughs> different types of music. And I keep mentioning, you know, to people I'm around how the funk, you know, the Parliament Funkadelic slash psychedelic, you know, funk uh, music. Um, it's amazing to listen to as music but also is an interesting style of music to listen to while on psychedelics. And it's kind of opened up a conversation of what is psychedelic music and how you just shared your playlist, which is a mixture of different genres. But traditionally, let's say when you go to, you know, events, festivals, psychedelic, you know, um, themed events, it's what one of my teachers, Glenda, would say, duff music. You know, constant all the way through three, four, five days sometimes. And um, there's other kind of psychedelic music out there, you know, that um, was created under the influences of psychedelics as well as, you know, supporting people on their journeys, you know, when they're taking psychedelics um, with intention. And, um, you know, it's just interesting that not all forms of psychedelic music are considered psychedelic. Um, but just the role that music plays, you know, in general and, you know, and definitely in the psychedelic experience and different types of music can definitely influence the effect of yourselves as well as, you know, what, what you may experience. But um, the alone, um, you know, having the experience with, you know, um, no stimulants whatsoever was known or some have coined it as, you know, the journey of the alone to into the alone, or when you would take heroic doses, you know, depending on who you are and where you're from, that's all kind of different, depending on how you was introduced to psychedelics, I guess. So um, I want to get an idea of how you was introduced to psychedelics and um, <laughs> if, that's, if that's something that you can share and, um, you know, how you've, you know, um, you don't have to share what dosages you've taken, but, you know, what, why are you taking it, you know, under what? circumstances or what you're getting out of it not you don't need to at this stage i'm not asking about sharing trips you know any trip stories anything but just you know what are you how is it given to you and why now just like with the yoga thing you just learn about yoga now you're teaching yoga yeah it's funny because again it was my older sister who set me on this path it's funny because my sister sets me on different paths and then just leaves me there she sets me on a path like come let's do this and then she fucks off and then she leaves me there. And it's the same with psychedelics as well. I'm really grateful for that, so don't get me wrong. Yeah, they're, they're amazing teachers, you know, because it's the exactly. journey of the alone into the alone, you know? So it's your path, yeah. Yeah, it's just really funny how she does it every time. And this time it was with Ayahuasca. She came up with, you know, there's this thing and, you know, it allows you to go deeper into yourself and, you know, we can let go of traumas, blah, blah. And, um, I'm that person who don't, who doesn't like to read too much about other people's experiences because I feel like I will take it on and, you know, bring it with me in whatever I will experience. Um, so she was doing the research and everything and I was just like, okay, you know, what does it do? You know, how does it work? Uh, but I don't want to, you know, read any experiences or, you know, read any testimonials. She made an appointment and we done our first ayahuasca together. I experienced a shift in consciousness 
I experienced a couple of things that I never experienced before, but it wasn't a profound trip. I can speak from, you know, I can say that now. I couldn't say at that time, but uh, it wasn't a really profound trip. Then I think this was months or maybe even a year later, and that's when I went to uh, uh, Indonesia, to Bali. And that's when I had uh, a first mushroom trip. Um, I just remember that I took too much. And um, the too much things happened. Uh, too many images, too many videos, too many feelings, too many everything. Um, it felt like I was traveling for like uh, 48 hours and every time I woke up, it was only 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so after a whole night of just surrendering to whatever I was feeling and seeing and experiencing, which was a lot, I remember just waking up thinking, there's some shit in there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I don't know how to use it yet. But if I get the right dosage and if I get the right tools to navigate myself with, I'm sure there's something in this. And that was just a strong feeling that I had after this very intense night of just surrendering to everything that was happening. I went back to Holland and I wanted to learn to grow my own mushrooms. And that's when I met you. <laughs> And then I grew my own mushrooms, and then my then I had my own trips, and I learned to navigate, and I'm still learning to navigate. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. Okay, well, um, you're definitely um, spreading the spores. I like your t-shirt there. You know, you're representing the mushroom. Well, I've got ironically, I've got a mushroom t-shirt on as well. Where I've been wearing all day. It's a bit smelly, but um, <laughs> smelling like mushrooms. Been rolling on the grass and stuff. Oh, that's a good that's, smell. But um, again, you know, I'm not going to ask you about because it's going to be pretty much the same answer. I feel you know, just that journey of you know, growing up, you know, culturally Islamic faith, psychedelics don't go too well together like you shared with us you know growing up and the people around you so rather than going into all of that what i want to get into is what do you know now what give us the highlight because you mentioned you said oh well, there is if you were prepared to go in you'll find that there's some stuff there so could you share one thing something that you know about connections with psychedelics and your religion in particular or religions in general yeah i grew up in a climate where i was teached by my family but also just in general by society that psychedelics is a hard drug it's forbidden it's illegal you don't do it it can send you mad people jump out of windows because of this just don't do it and um my experience told me differently and when i start searching in religions is when i found that in different religions it's being used it's like an asian practice they used it in ancient times um, in different ways to <clears throat> navigate themselves to navigate the universe to explore consciousness to you know uh, do many different things with it i used it now to you know for self-healing um, to explore myself and to explore consciousness um, but if we look at different religions, it was also a way to just <clears throat> go into other dimensions, to have Holy Communion, to really connect with the Source. And when I found that, that's, um, it just made me feel a bit better <laughs> and more comfortable in my journeys because I was always carrying this subconscious idea that, you know, I'm doing something which is illegal, which is because it's illegal, it's probably not good. That's how I used to think, um, because otherwise it wouldn't be illegal, right? Um, so yeah, I found that, you know, in religions, they also used it. And that's when I found that, hmm, <clears throat> um, that something is illegal in this society it doesn't necessarily mean it's illegal because society really cares about my safety. You know, so um, yeah, there's a whole world that opened up. Okay. 
So if we bring it back to religion and anything that you've seen within your religion that has highlighted, you know, or suggested, you know, specifically, you know, or, you know, is it more just because that was the way things were at that time, that's obviously what the people were, you know, would have been doing these in the customs that were around, which I think is the case, but are there any highlights or specifics that you're aware of connecting psychedelics and religion? Um, yeah, well, if we look at my religion, Islam, uh, there's like a, um, like a Arabic ayahuasca that uh, they are using Syria rule, um, Haramala, and um, that's funny yeah, because if you, is what I'm talking about, like key words that allow people to then say, oh, let me go on Google, because you've just given us psychedelics and religion and it just like, is it, oh, you can't be real, this can't be the truth, but that's interesting. Syrian rule, just Google Syrian rule, okay. um, or Harmala, H-A-R-M-A-L-A, -A -A. Harmala. Um, it's like, a, I call it like an Arabic ayahuasca, um, and it's funny because the Arabic word, uh, you know, when, when you translate it, um, uh, it's, it's like, um uh, the thing that sends you mad or the thing that sends you crazy that's even the that's the okay. translation right right but it refers to best i just i don't know the arabic word anymore it's like uh the sessa i think it's the sessa yes. and i can find it quickly the sessa right you know what i can tell you it is it is it is i was um because i've done something yesterday i made reference to the the deity or the natir should i say best from ancient egypt and how it's connected to the same plant. There's a connection yeah. between Egypt and the Islamic practices of, you know, of, of, yeah, of, the, of these, you know, of using these technologies. Yeah. So, so that's a psychedelic that's being mentioned in, um, you know, in my religion. I never tried it, so I cannot speak from experience and tell you how it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, it is mentioned there and um, it's still being used today, not just, you know, to have psychedelic experiences, but also to ward off evil eye. And, you know, uh, it's being used in spiritual practices um, uh, for safety, for protection. They use it in different ways. They hang it in front of the front mm -hmm. doors. And, you know, different people from different cultures have different ways of using this plant. So that's there. And, um, there's also sayings in hadiths, which is stories, um, findings, researches of Islamic scholars, uh, sayings of the Prophet or his family. And there's a hadith that says um, that, um, you know, the friends or the companions of the Prophet, uh, they had like a comment about truffles. And they said, you know, the truffles are like the smallpox of this earth. And that's when the prophet, uh, peace upon him, said that the truffles are a kind of menna, and menna is a bread of heaven, and its juice is a remedy for the evil eye. And there's another saying that tells or that says that truffles um, wards off um, evil spirits, evil eye, or it can protect you from 72 evil spirits okay. so there are different sayings about truffles psychedelics but it's definitely mentioned okay thank you for sharing that gives us some good references there for people who want to go and check out and do further research for themselves um so the fact that there is some information based on what you're sharing i'm aware of it i don't know what others are you know the connections with psychedelics obviously it's not in the mainstream you know, aspects of the of the religion. If you're going to your mosque, I guess they're not talking about psychedelics and that aspect of it. And then obviously are some keepers of this knowledge within the culture and traditions. Um, and this, I guess, is some of the deeper aspects of the religion. You know, that, um, you know, I'm aware of, you know, in Christianity, for example, they've got the Gnostics, in Judaism, they've got the Kabbalah, Again, just simply because of the connections with psychedelics and this kind of esoteric knowledge, um, is this some of the deeper meaning that you're talking about in Islam? Where do they get there? Who holds the deeper meaning? Where you know? So where where would you go for this? What 
group yet? Do you know? Could you share? Where would you go? Well, I found many things. Um, you know, Islam has different groups. Um, and I find that many esoteric information is found with the Sufis. Okay. So that's definitely uh, an esoteric group of Islam that you can check out if you want to have deeper meanings uh, of the religion. Okay, okay. I, I think, I, I feel like the Sufis are more like the Buddhists of Islam, you know, they meditate in different ways. They sing, they make music, they dance, they do psychedelics. You know, they, <laughs> they, they're just different. Yeah. Nice. Good different. Cool. So I'm um, just to round up the psychedelics and religion because it's, it's a real interesting subject and I'm really pushing it now because what came up off the back of my talk um, a couple of days ago is when you're doing your psychedelics and religion talk next uh, because I, you know, I made reference to it a few times and I'll deliver you know, that with you sometimes. So um, what I would like to know just from a perspective of somebody who may be viewing this who you know, has their faith, may be curious, interested, learned about psychedelics, um, how have you found it in relationship to your religion? Psychedelics and your, is in your own faith. Has it supported you? Are you, yeah, are you a practicing Muslim? And you, yeah, how does that, how has it panned out for you? It definitely supports in, in, in my faith, uh, in understanding my religion. I think one of my biggest challenges, and I think that that is for many people, um, my biggest challenge in religion was um, the division that I was making all the time. So yeah, in Islam, we believe there's just one God and everything comes from this God, right? But still, religious people are having a really hard time to just accept or respect other people's opinions, perspectives, and ways of worshiping God. Mm. You know, people are fighting over uh, which is the best way or what is the best way, or you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing it like that way. Although we still believe that it's just one God. So that was my biggest challenge to just uh, have this open mind and to see everything that people are doing as valid because that's just one source. And I think what psychedelics really supported me with was um, removing these glasses that I was seeing through in the vision. So it just allowed me to gain a, a, like a, a broader or a bigger perspective of everything, seeing the different connections in different religions, seeing that really it is all the same. You know, we are talking about the same thing, same archetypes, uh, same everything. It's just, it has a different jacket, a different suit. But um, what's in that suit is really the same. And I think psychedelics really allowed me to see that, not just in human beings, not just in religion, but in nature, in everything. You know, in all levels, it just really helped me, or supported me to see a bigger picture. Thank you again. Thank you again. See, we're um, we're digging deep, and we dig deep to you know to bring out the diamonds, to bring out the jewels. And um, I'm going to go there, and I hope you're willing to go there with me. <laughs> uh, uh -oh. Because I. Uh -oh. <laughs> because I, I <laughs>